please note that this video contains spoilers. Blade Movie Thoughts. Let me start with something that really irks me about the movie and kind of always has bothered me. Sunblock to, you know, survive the sun's rays. If it was like a special home brew where they talked about, you know, this is like, I don't know, hundreds of times more powerful than, you know, what you can buy yourself. Or if it was really clear that they could not stay for very long. I mean, granted, you don't see them stay out in the sun for very long with the sunblock, but still. Or maybe if there had been, like, a brief sequence of a vampire who did stay out too long or something, and then, you know, he died from that. But it just really kind of bothers me that they do, because it could easily, they could have ridden around it, you know, they could have had those scenes be indoors or during the night, or have some kind of, granted, Udo Kier being killed by, you know, a sunrise, that's pretty cool. And, you know, Udo Kier, just cool in, in general, you know, that German accent really adds something. No matter what he's playing, that's always just a really cool accent, because it sounds slightly different from, you know, I don't know, maybe it isn't even really a German accent, I'm not sure. Anyway, the Blood God, for those who've seen the documentary that's on some DVD releases of the movie, you know what this was originally supposed to look like. It's actually kind of funny when you look at the finished movie and you think about those lines that kind of don't make complete sense anymore now that they edited it because it was such a late decision to change the ending. You know, Frost talks about, you know, anything that's in the Blood God's path will instantly be turned. What we see in the end, if that's supposed to be the Blood God, how exactly is that going to, you know, I suppose we don't see him come across any humans that he should have turned, you know, because Karen is, you know, a bit far up, so I guess, but, you know, the original version made more sense. It was this big swirling blood creature, and you could kind of see how, okay, that might actually turn, and you see, you know, in the deleted scenes, there are, you see how it's supposed to work. You see a visual representation of it, you know, passing people and turning them, or at least passing them, and it's told that they're, they're being turned, you know. And there's that whole thing about how are they going to survive, and again, this was deleted from the movie, but there's a plan about having people frozen and then they'll just suck the blood of those. That would really have, pardon the pun, sucked, I think. it. It's a decent enough, you know, ticking bomb kind of thing. It's definitely something we want to avoid. But seeing Frost turn into that thing and just the look of it in general, Maybe today, you know, with the better CGI, let's be honest. But back then, it just didn't look good. I mean, the CGI blood in the movie, it doesn't look that good, but there's not that much of it either. Or when you see it, it's, you know, I don't know, it's more well-integrated, maybe. But what you see on the DVD of how it was supposed to look just did not look good. And it's just not that interesting, or at least I th find it more interesting to have a martial arts sword fight between, you know, the good guy and the bad guy, even though we haven't actually seen the bad guy use a sword on before that point. But anyway, you know, we already know Blade's good with a sword. And it's also a good kind of... It's basically the one time in the movie where he faces someone where that one person is too much for him to handle. You know, every other time, there's a couple of times he's subdued, but that's because there are several people around him, you know, hitting him, 
at the same time and such. The creature, whatever, the pearly, that, that's pretty cool. You know, the big, fat, you know, I like that not all of the vampires are just regular vampires. You know, that they have this big thing that's like, I, I don't remember if it's the commentary or somewhere anyway, it's said that the idea is that he feeds by every so often someone will bring, you know, like a young, like a child down for him to feed on or something, you know, because he doesn't really move clearly. I have to wonder if it's in, it's in the movie that the vampires age slower. I guess that might also mean that the, you know, the vampire, the, the guys in charge, you know, the 12 or 13, I guess it starts out as, that, you know, the 12 of whom are used in that final ritual, you know, the purebloods. I guess they're also older. I don't know. I, I do kind of have to wonder, you know, is it just like, if two vampires have a child, will it automatically be a pure blood, or only if both of the parents are also pure bloods? You know, if two infected vampires have a child, will that just be, you know, apparently, if the mother has been bitten while she's pregnant, then it'll be, you know, a day walk, or you kind of have to wonder why they don't try to, you know, repeat that. Frost says he knows everything about Blade, you why not just go out bite a you know bite another pregnant woman, you know they don't all have to turn out like Blade. Just don't you know abandon them. I guess this is you know the big daddy why did you leave kind of thing. You know maybe this ought to teach some guys to really be careful. You know and actually use protection because you never know your child might come back some years later chop you to pieces with a sword. I'm just saying, you know, it could happen. The the self-hatred of Blade is quite nicely done and, you know, him having to kill his mother or having to, you know, he chooses to because to him a vampire is a vampire. You know, it's, it is that kind of, you know, if Maybe you could call it racism, I guess, you know, if you consider the vampires a race, you know. It is that kind of thing where they remind him of what he almost is and what he used to be, you know. He did used to kill people and drink their blood just to survive. He's not very happy about that and, you know, it causes self-hatred and rather than kill himself, he, you know, goes out and actively kills the ones who are currently doing what he used to do. And it's actually a quite good theme, you know, it's it's a very common conflict, I'd say, that someone sees some something in someone else that they recognize in themselves, and they hate, you know, being reminded of that, so they attack the other person more than maybe try to change themselves or to accept, you know, this negative quality, or, you know, potentially negative quality. And, you know, him blade feeding on Karen is also a good, you know, it is that kind of thing of, you know, in that situation he still has to, you know, because he doesn't have his serum and he's practically bled to death at that point, so, you know, they have to, they have to do something, and that's really the best solution, you know, and it is a very sexual-looking activity when he drains her of blood, you know, more, you know, and a lot of the other feedings in the Blade movies look more violent and bloody, whereas this one is just kind of sexual. It's interesting that 
Curtis, I think was his name, you know, the other doctor actually, you know, becomes a sort of zombie instead of something else, you know, it, but it's, it's a cool enough, you know, idea, and to have that kind of, and, you know, sure, sometimes it makes sense, it makes sense that sometimes it does go wrong, that, you know, you bite them, you think you infect them the right way, or something goes wrong, something reacts weirdly, chemically, and, you know, that's the outcome, you know. About Curtis also, when he's bitten, I think the film does a pretty good job of, you know, making you think, okay, this is going to be a sweet, you know, or not sweet, you know, it's going to be one of those emotional talks, and, you know, you can practically hear the guys in the audience yawning and thinking, oh, can we get some more, you know, vampire stuff? And then, right in the middle of it, you know, the vampire gets up and bites. And at that point, we have no idea that it's still alive. You know, there have been no indications that Quinn hadn't died from being torched. The opening action scene is just great. You know, you have the... You know, the whole build-up of it, we have a brief glimpse of the, you know, the frozen people that are going to be the solution for once everyone on Earth is a vampire, apparently. And, you know, this girl luring this completely clueless guy who never appears again. I don't know if he just, you know got away scot-free, or, you know, Blade tells Karen, they know, they know that you know, so, you know, they're gonna try to kill you now, but, you know, that guy... Has it ever occurred to anyone else that the cop, you know, Krieger, the clueless guy, and maybe Curtis, actually kind of look alike. They're not, I don't think they're the same guy, but they kind of look alike. They have a similar look. Maybe the casting agent really has the hots for that type or something. Anyway, you know, opening scene, you know, she gets him all the way in there. It's a slaughterhouse. I don't know what exactly he was expecting. And then, you know, he's like, ah, oh, my throat is really dry. And then the blood comes down, you know, because he's not the only one with a, with a dry throat there. And, you know, the DJ, you know, lifts, you know, arch, arches his back and you see blood bath behind him, you know. And the music gets even more intense as the blood starts pouring and, you know, then suddenly Blade is there. And apparently they haven't noticed him, I guess because they're too busy, you know, kicking the crap out of this guy. I guess no one ever told them not to play with their food. And he just decimates this dance club, you know. P.S. I by far prefer the effects in this, you know, them getting turned to ash, you know, and the others... <sighs> I never really cared for the effect in the others. Anyway, I think also part of what makes the action really, really badass in this is that Blade has a really easy time of, you know, dispatching the enemies, mostly. And that's also why, you know, when he does meet Frost, it you know, and fights him, it's more intense because suddenly he actually does have some opposition, you know, some challenge here. But, you know, even when he, excuse me, when, when he meets, excuse me again, familiars or vampires who can actually really fight, he still, you know, takes them out with relative ease. There's not a lot of, you know, he kind of just wades right through the vampire masses in this movie. So it's pretty much just, you know, just point me to where they are and I will take them out. The movie does a pretty good job of introducing this universe, I think, and 
you know, not losing the audience in spite of all the details there are to it. You know, there's the vampire religion, there's the idea that they actually control, you know, they're all over the place, they control everything just, you know, secretly, and there's this idea that they actually survive by way of not growing in number and not killing too many people, you know, not being too overt about their activities, so, you know, and, you know, we have the class struggle kind of thing of the pure bloods versus the infected vampires, you know, it, and it actually really does work, you know, there's not really any point where you feel like you just can't follow what it's, you know, what is going on. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.